Nath announced the schedule. He said this year's Upajila Porishad elections will be held in four phases. As per the schedule for the first phase of this election, candidates will be able to submit nomination papers till April 15th. Nomination papers will be scrutinized on April 17th. The last date for withdrawing nomination papers is April 22nd, while symbols will be allocated on April 23rd. The voting will be held on May 8th. Voting will be held through EVM in 22 Upajalas out of 152. Ashok Kumar Deidnath also said voting in the second phase election will be held on May 23rd, the third phase on May 29th, and the fourth phase voting will be held on June 5th. Visiting Sweden's Crown Princess Victoria praised Bangladesh's jute products. While visiting the Jude Diversification Promotion Center, JDPC at Tejga, in the capital this afternoon, she was impressed by jute products the princess received insights into JDP's various initiatives. Earlier, UNDP Goodwill Ambassador Crown Princess Victoria visited UNDP's Bangladesh office and participated in a view exchange meeting. In another event, Princess Victoria attended a parade organized by Water Aid and facilitated by UNDP at Mahakali in the capital this afternoon. Dhaka North City Corporation Mayor Atikul Islam was present. Furthermore, Princess Victoria convened with the representatives of multinational banks and international financial institutions at Hotel Intercontinental in the capital this morning. Later, the Swedish Crown Princess met the stakeholders of the private sector at Radisson Hotel in the capital. She also paid a visit to the Swedish Embassy in Dhaka where she held discussions with the embassy staff. Later in the evening, visiting Crown Princess of Sweden, Victoria received a warm welcome from officials of the United Nations Development Program and the Ambassador of Sweden in Dhaka at Hotel Intercontinental and the capital. During the gathering, Princess Victoria commended Bangladesh's advancements in digital technology and its efforts in providing shelter for Rohingya refugees. She expressed Sweden's commitment to supporting Bangladesh's development initiatives. We have seen how inclusive digital development is reducing poverty in rural Bangladesh. Very impressive. Also, we have experienced young entrepreneurs tackling climate impact in vulnerable areas. Additionally, we have visited the Rohingya refugee camps and engaged in meaningful conversations with students at the Asian University in order to avoid accidents on highways during Eid, road transport and bridges minister Obal Qadir directed authorities concerned to strengthen monitoring of the movement of three-wheelers and motorcycles. He gave the directive at a meeting of the stakeholders at Bonani BRT Bhabon in the capital today to ensure a smooth journey during the upcoming Eid. Accident Chulchi, three wheeler, motorcycle, vapor water driving, no asset. Shop kitchen, milie accident, hochi, teen chakar gari abong, shadoke, shop che, borrow podro, motorcycle. Ekanaka niti mala corador, amra baista shoro, egulaka to nila podra, is a three wheeler. Shunna, cano shunna. কোন জনপ্রতিনিধি আমাদের জনপ্রতিনিধিরা অনেক জায়গা বাধা দেন তারা থ্রি হুইলার চলতে দেবে গরিবের জন্য দরদ কারো কারো উতলে উঠে কিন্তু সার্বিকভাবে সেটা যে কত মানুষের প্রাণহানির কারণ সে কথাটা কেউ ভাববে না জীবন আগে না জীবিকা আগে আসন্ন ঈদের আগে তিন দিন পরের তিন দিন মহাসড়কে ট্রাক কাবার ব্যান্ড লরি চলাচল বন্ধ রাখে এখানে শুধু থাকবে প্রয়োজনীয় খাদ্য দ্রব্য পচনশীল দ্রব্য গার্মেন্টস সামগ্রী ঔষধ সার জ্বালানি বহনকারী যানবাহন Later, the Road Transport and Bridges Minister handed over checks as compensation to the families of five persons killed in road accidents. 
World Food Program WFP representative Domenico Scalpelli and UN Women Organization representative of Bangladesh Gitanjali Singh paid courtesy call on Foreign Minister Dr. Hassan Mahmoud at his office in the capital today. During the meeting, the Foreign Minister exchanged views with the delegates on food management and women development. Dr. Hassan Mahmoud urged the representative of the World Bank program to take various programs to encourage people to consume crops and food produced in the country. WFP country representative Dominic Scalpelli highlighted the future plans of his organization's food program for the Rohingyas. The foreign minister highly appreciated the school feeding program and WFP's food assistance program for the Rohingyas being conducted since 2011. In the meeting with UN Women representative in Bangladesh, Gitanjali Singh, the Foreign Minister highlighted Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina's strong commitment to gender equality and women empowerment and the achievements of the government. She also highlighted Bangladesh's remarkable progress in women empowerment in political and administrative fields. Foreign Minister Dr. Hassan Mahmoud praised UN Women Organization for being a trusted partner in this development journey. Now, international news. Israel orders Palestinians to evacuate Al Shifa Hospital, threatening to blow up the largest medical complex in the Gaza Strip if they do not. Local Palestinian media is reporting that the Israeli military has blown up a building used for specialist care at the Al Shifa Hospital in Gaza City. Over 100 Palestinians have been killed by Israeli attacks across Gaza in the last 24 hours. Meanwhile, the head of UNRWA, Filippi Lazzarini, said hunger and disease will soon become the main killer in Gaza as Israel's blockade continues. Israeli PM Netanyahu tells U.S. Republican senators that Israel will continue the war to defeat Hamas. The United States has circulated a draft United Nations Security Council resolution calling for an immediate ceasefire tied to the release of hostages in Gaza. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken disclosed that during his tour of the Middle East. Israel's key political and military backer has repeatedly vetoed previous UNSC votes on ending the nearly six-month war, objecting as recently as February to the use of the term immediate in a draft submitted by Algeria. In recent weeks, however, it has upped the pressure on Israel while insisting that Hamas fighters must immediately release the captive seized during its October 7th attacks on Israel. The first ever nuclear energy summit is taking place in Brussels, marking a historic milestone in energy discussions. The meeting will bring together leaders from EU countries, along with representatives from the US, the United Kingdom, Japan, Turkey and Pakistan. Co-organized by Belgium and the International Atomic Energy Agency, IAEA, the summit has already drawn the presence of Polish Prime Minister Donald Tusk in the Belgian capital. Nuclear energy has all the advantages to become part of the solution to achieve the climate goals we have set for ourselves by 2050, argued Belgian Prime Minister Alexander de Croo announcing the summit. He was echoed by the Director General of the IAEA, Rafael Mariano Grossi, nuclear energy is an extraordinary resource whose full potential we must harness if you want to mitigate climate change. After the nuclear energy summit, Polish Prime Minister Tusk will participate in the European Council summit, which is to begin in the afternoon and late until Friday. At least 69 Rohingya refugees have been rescued after a wooden boat with an estimated 150 people on board capsized off the coast of Indonesia's Aci province. The Commission for Missing Persons and Victims of Violence, Contras Aci, said today that 42 men, 18 women and 9 children were brought to port, but dozens more are to have feared to have drowned. The boat is thought to have run into trouble some 19 kilometers from the beach of Kuala Bubon on the west coast of Aci after it hit rough seas on Wednesday morning. 
earlier. Six people rescued from the boat by Achini's fishermen and taken to a shelter where they were able to speak to Faisal Rahman, a representative from the UN refugee today. He said the survivors' testimony suggested that about 50 people died when the boat capsized. It is thought that most of these presumed to have died where women and children were unable to swim and carried out to sea by the currents. Russia has launched a wave of missile attacks on Ukraine's capital, Kiev, wounding at least 13 people and damaging several buildings, according to local officials. The attack on Thursday, the first mass strike in 44 days, targeted the city with ballistic and cruise missiles, said Sehrili Popko, the head of the city's military administration. Russia's defense ministry says its forces have captured the village of Tonike in eastern Ukraine, 8.5 kilometer west of Avdivka. Meanwhile, the Kremlin says Russia would take retaliatory measures in its own interests and use every legal mechanism at its disposal if the UA used profits from frozen Russian assets to buy arms for Ukraine. South Korean Ambassador to Bangladesh Park Young Sik made a courtesy call on Environment, Forest and Climate Change Minister Saber Hossein Choudhury at the Secretariat in Tuck today. During the call on, they discussed various issues including bilateral issues and carbon credit exchange and cooperation under Paris Treaty. The minister informed the South Korean envoy about Bangladesh's position on achieving sustainable development goals, especially implementation of environmental protection and climate related programs. The South Korean ambassador reiterated their pledges of bilateral cooperation on decreasing the adverse impact of climate change and exchanging knowledge and technology for protecting valuable natural wealth of this region. Now the timing for Sahari tonight and Iftar tomorrow. Last time for Sahari tonight in Dhaka and its adjoining areas is 4.41 a.m and iftar tomorrow at 6.14 p.m. in Dhaka and its adjoining areas. Now weather. Met Office and its weather forecast till 6 p.m. tomorrow said rain or thunder showers accompanied by temporary gustier squally wind is likely to occur at many places over Ratshahi, Dhaka, Moimunshing and Silt divisions. At a few places over Khulna, Borishal and Chattogram divisions and at one or two places over Rangpur division. Day and night temperature may remain nearly unchanged of the country and the Met Office. Now news on sports. Australia women's cricket team defeated Bangladesh by 118 runs in the first ODI of the three-match series in Mirbur. As a result, Bangladesh is trailed by one nil in the series. Bangladesh won the toss and invited Australia to bat first at the Sher Bangla National Cricket Stadium. Bangladeshi bowlers took five wickets for 78 runs and put the Aussie girls under pressure. However, thanks to Annabella Sunderland's unbeaten 58 and Alana King's unbeaten 46, Australia scored 213 runs for seven wickets in the stip 50 overs. Sultana Khatun and Nah Nahida Akhtar took two wickets each for Tigers. Chasing the victory target of 214 runs, the girls of Bangladesh could not stand the Aussie girls' bowling attack. The hosts were all out for just 95 runs in 36 overs, and Alana King was named player of the match. Bangladesh will take on Sri Lanka in the first test of the two-match series in Silet tomorrow. The match will start at 10 a.m. at Silet International Cricket Stadium. Bangladesh and Sri Lanka have played 24 test matches against each other so far. Bangladesh has won only once, while the Lankans won 18. The other five matches were drawn. To end the bulletin, headlines once again. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina seeks Indian cooperation to import electricity from Bhutan using Indian Corridor. National Committee on Fitra fixes a minimum of 115 taka fitra per person this year.
Election Commission announces schedule for 152 Upajala Parishad elections to be held on May 8th in the first phase. Visiting Swedish Princess Victoria highly lauds Bangladesh's jute products as she attends different programs. Obadul Qadir asks for heightened vigilance on movements of three-wheelers and motorcycles to curb road accidents during the evening. Israeli attacks kill more than 100 Palestinians in Gaza over the past 24 hours. And Australian women cricketers beat Bangladesh by 118 runs in the first ODI of the series at Newport today. And that's all from the newsroom for the moment. Thank you for staying with us and we invite you to watch our 11.30 Bama News. Kudafs.